oh, this is a game changer. What? Oh, hell yeah. Oops. What's up, y'all? I ordered myself some like ergonomic stuff from my chair and it came in because my chair is, has been killing me. So let me set this up real quick. I mean, if I'm not official now, like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know who is. I mean, seriously. Scheduled a live and got some comfortable shit for my chair. Does this mean I'm old? I think it means I'm old, but I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah! Y'all can't tell me nothing. Okay, go away. Go away. Oh my God, look how many people are in here. Holy shit. Y'all really like true crime, huh? Love that top photo. Which one? So that's Tahoe. She was our 110 pound German Shepherd. She passed away. That's Stella. She's still here. And that is my firstborn child. She came from my womb. I birthed her out of my loins. There will never be another one like her. They are poodle earrings. Yes. Okay, y'all, we're going to give everybody a couple more minutes and then we are going to get right into it. I am so excited, y'all. I feel like I was studying for a class and now I feel like I get to present my research project and I'm so happy. I have notes, y'all. I have notes. 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 So I titled it. Here's the thing. Normally I try to acknowledge everyone. I try to read all of your questions. I am not going to read questions or comments tonight. I'm just talking and you guys are listening. And I know that's different for us, but um, I have a lot of information to cover. So um, I, so we're talking about Darlie Routier. I uh, have known the ins and outs of this case for many, many years. This happened when I was in sixth grade. Um, I'm not going to turn off comments because I want y'all to be able to talk to each other. I want y'all to find friends in the comments. And also, if one question is repeatedly being asked that I'm missing, Katie is going to pin it to the top of the page for me, and then I will address it. Um, and so we're just going to jump into it. Tonight, My we're going to be on here for no more than an hour to an hour and a half. I set it for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. We'll see how it goes. My goal is to stick closer to an hour because I know people have stuff to do. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about Darlie Routier. Darlie Routier, I was in sixth grade when this happened. Her sister was in eighth grade. I idolized and looked up to her sister. Um, I had a very good friend who was best friends with Darlie's sister. So it was like me and my friend and then Darlie's sister and her best friend, and we were the annoying little sisters that, uh, you know, just, God, and she's so sweet. I know we're not talking about her, but, like, she's just such a damn good person. Like, beautiful, sweet, everybody wanted, everybody loved her, right? And I think that's indicative of her whole family. Anyways, my goal tonight is we're going to talk about DNA. We're going to talk about Darlie's shirt. We're going to talk about Tom Bevel, who is a, um expert witness that testified for the state, and we're gonna talk about the knife. If I find myself speaking too long on one subject, we might only fit like three of them in, and what I'm gonna do is when I get off of here, I'm gonna make videos about them and post them for people who weren't here, and if you had any questions that I'm not able to answer tonight, you can post them in the video, and then I'm also gonna make one long YouTube video of everything we talk about tonight. So, the gist of it is that um, Darla Routier was married with three children. She was married to her high school sweetheart. I gave you guys some documentaries to watch. I don't know if y'all have seen my videos from, um, this morning, but there's a new documentary. The link is in my bio. It's a three and a half hour documentary on, um, YouTube. It's only been out about two weeks. I will tell you the information is phenomenal. The guy, he presents both sides, even if he doesn't agree with both sides. 
and and he talks about a lot of stuff that's phenomenal i haven't even finished it yet but his voice makes me want to go to sleep like it is horrible presentation he's a very bad storyteller but if you can make it through that and just listen to the content then it's got good information the last one i wanted you guys to watch the last defense by viola davis i don't know if we broke the server or what but it got taken down so um on june 5th Darley stayed downstairs um, at her house in Rowlett, Texas. She decided to sleep downstairs. She had not been sleeping well. She had a seven-month-old baby. This was the first night she had been away from the baby. She told her husband, Darren, upstairs, who was her high school sweetheart, you know, you take care of the baby. I'm going to bond with the older boys, and we're going to have a sleepover. She fell asleep downstairs on the couch with her two boys, older boys. The lights were on. Correction. The TV was on, and the volume was on, Okay. Um, the state of Texas alleges that she murdered her two boys and staged this entire scene. Um, Darley alleges that someone broke in and she awoke to her boys having already been stabbed and um, she had been fighting with him. Uh, he ran out through the utility room. Um, he dropped the knife. He ended up exiting through the garage. We'll go over the layout of the house later, but the utility room had access to the garage. Uh, the garage had windows in it. Um, and so we're going to get to all that later. But tonight, what we're going to talk about is the first thing we're going to talk about is the DNA. Um, and I could talk about this subject for a long time. So we're going to try to narrow it down. When I'm talking about DNA and blood spatter specifically, I want to talk about Tom Bevel. Okay. Tom Bevel is a, um, uh, blood self-proclaimed i don't even know what i have a bias against him i think he's bullshit so i don't really know his entire background you guys can google him if you want b e b as in boy e v as in victor e l tom bevel he was an expert witness that testified for the state he we're going to talk about him don't let me get ahead of myself okay so one of the things that was very intricate and um heavily weighed on in the trial was that Tom Bevel testified and he said that Darley, well, he did what they call a uh, blood splatter analysis, which is exactly how it sounds if you were to do this motion, you know, where would the blood land, right? And then he also testified, one of the, one of the big items of contention that he testified about was that um, on the right shoulder, of Darley's nightgown, the bloodstain pattern consisted of all three of their profiles. So Devin, Damon, and Darley. Devin was the older boy, Damon was younger, and Darley obviously is on death row. Um, Damon is the only one that she was tried for. She has not been tried for Devin, and we're going to go over this later. She was not tried for Devin. I believe she was tried for Damon for two reasons. We're going to talk about one of them, but most importantly, his age qualified the charge for a capital murder charge. So all three of their DNA was on the, I want y'all to remember this, was on the top right corner of her nightgown, okay? If we are going to believe, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, okay? If we are going to believe the state's position and the state's testimony, we have to believe that Tom Bevel says all three of their blood is on the shoulder. That means Darley had to have been bleeding when she stabbed the boy. So she would have had to have already been injured herself, right? Because that's how her blood gets introduced to their blood. So if we're going with the state's position that Darley was bleeding at the time the boys were stabbed, she would have had to have self-inflicted her wounds first, correct? Um, one thing I want to touch on is that Tom Bevel, okay, the National Academy of Science says that his form of testimony, because he is a professional expert, this is what he does. He gets hired and he testifies in cases. We're going to talk about this. Um, even the National Academy of Science says that his style of blood stain pattern crime analysis is more subjective than scientific okay so subjective not scientific but it's being used in a death row case so if we're gonna go with his theory that based on the blood splatter all three of their profiles are in here then how did the bloody sock 
get 75 feet away from their house. So if any of you haven't watched the documentaries and you don't know what I'm talking about, there was a bloody sock. And when I say bloody, I'm talking about this much blood, the end of my finger. It is a traditional white tube sock that has the tiniest fucking... That much blood. That is how much blood that damn sock had on it, okay? And it was found 75 yards away from Darley's house. The prosecution is going to tell you that Darley planted it there. But Darley's blood was not found on that sock. The boy's blood was found on the sock. But if we're going to go with what Tom Bevel says, and we know Darley was bleeding at the time that she stabbed the boys, two things. Number one, how is her blood not on that sock? Number two... Have you guys seen the extent of her injuries? She was like within one or two millimeters of hitting her carotid artery and there was substantial amount of blood. How come there's no blood trail for 75 yards leading to the sock? The state of Texas in the entire trial, the state of Texas never even attempted to provide an explanation for how that sock got there. Yet they say Darley did it. So if you read the transcripts, it is believed to be true that Darley put that sock there. But that literally is contraindicated by their own testimony, their own expert witness. Now, remember, I'm bringing all of this up because what, what does the state prove in a case beyond a reasonable doubt? Okay, I'm going to say this a million times beyond a reasonable doubt. The state did not even attempt to make a shitty explanation for how she put it there. They just didn't, they just didn't explain it at all. Okay. Okay. I'm getting so worked up. Let's talk about Darley's shirt. Um, okay, so have you guys seen the pictures of Darley's shirt? If you haven't, Google them. Hold on, I have my laptop right here. And look, you're never going to get me to... When I'm talking to you guys about a case, I'm not going to try to make you believe that 100% there's absolutely no way she did it. I believe that. But all I'm trying to show people is that there's so many spaces in this case for reasonable doubt. That's it. Because technically, the defense doesn't have to prove that their client is innocent. They have to, the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they're guilty. Okay. So, oh, can you guys see this? Okay, that's her shirt. It was a white shirt. You see how much blood is on it? That's her shirt. So that's what we're going to talk about next. So Darley had to be, have aid rendered to her, correct? Um, she had a uh, bruising really really extensive bruising on the inside of her arm she had a stab wound in her arm whereas the, the blade of the knife went in her arm and then she had a massive uh cut on her neck the paramedics cut off her shirt the the main thing we're, we're focusing on right now is the chain of custody of specifically her shirt but also about some of the boys so um the paramedics cut her shirt off when they cut her shirt off, they placed it into a paper bag, but they placed it into a paper bag while it was still wet. Another thing that I think is interesting is that the bloody clothing from the crime scene was not collected by the police department immediately. The two patients that were worked on, which were Damon and Darley, because Devin, unfortunately, was beyond the point of help when they got there. Damon and Darley were worked on. Their clothing was taken to the fire department. I still don't really understand why, but um, their clothing was kept at the fire department. The police department had to go retrieve it from the fire department, and the police officer who retrieved it, his name is Officer Maine, I believe. Yes, Maine, M-A-Y-N-E. So he gives testimony, um, but remember this. They had to go to the fire department to get Damon and Darley's clothes. So when the paramedics cut her shirt off of her, and trust me, you will not find me pointing the finger at healthcare workers. Saving someone is the utmost importance, right? I don't expect paramedics to be worried about preserving evidence. But um, 
So they cut her shirt off of her and they placed it into a paper bag, but they did that while it was wet. The reason that we're bringing this up is important. I'm going to get to it. So, um, officer main testifies that when he went to the fire department, he picked up two bags. He picked up one bag that had Darlie's nightgown in it or her shirt. And he picked up a second bag that had Damon's jeans and underwear. Where, where's Damon's shirt? Nobody knows where Damon's shirt is. In the entire transcript, if you do control F and you search the entire transcript, it doesn't mention Damon's shirt. So without Damon's shirt's whereabouts being accounted for, that does one of two things. Number one, at least in my mind, number one, it shows a lack of integrity in the chain of custody of the evidence, right? So it pokes a hole, reasonable doubt. Number two, how do we know that Damon's shirt wasn't also put into the bag with Darlie's shirt at one point? Of course, their blood is going to all be on the same shirt because she tried to render aid to her boys. But so much weight was put on that shirt and the location of each of the boys' blood on that shirt by Tom Bevel. Tom Bevel testified, y'all have to go see it for yourself, but he talks about the angle at which she... Kids clothes were at the fire department because they... No, both the kids clothes were not. Only one of the boys was worked on, so... They were not, but that doesn't negate where is, where's Damon's shirt. Okay. So he puts so much of the testimony was based on how much force she would have had to use to go behind her back. And we're going to get into the force as it's relevant to the injuries in a second. But they went on and on about how if the blood landed here and if there was blood on this spot of the back and the bottom down by the butt of the shirt, if their blood was back there, it had to have been because she was the one that stabbed him. Or could it have been because they were cross-contaminated because nobody has a chain of custody record or even knows where the damn shirt is? The other thing is Officer Main specifically testified that the shirt, the bag that had Darlie's shirt in it, it had dried blood on the bottom of the bag. So that means it had to have been put in there while it was wet. And what happens to things that are wet when they make contact with something else? They bleed, right? So again, if we're going to go with Bevel's testimony and if we're going to believe what he says, then we also have to believe that the chain of custody and the manner in which the bloody clothes were handled could all e integrate into his findings, right? Um... Okay, Do let's go on to Tom Bevel in more detail. So if you are a super, super nerd and you're like really getting into this case, you might want to get a pen and paper because there's some stuff you might want to write down. I'm not going to be able to uh, go into detail about all these names I'm going to use because we'd be here for like 100 more years talking about other cases. Um, so Tom Bevel is, his, his role is he's an expert witness. He mostly testifies for prosecutions, uh, but I did find one case where he testified for the defense. I can only find one. I'm not saying that means that another one's not out there. I'm just saying that the amount of time that I had to dedicate to sit down and look up Tom Bevel, uh, I could only find one case that popped up where he was hired for the defense. He seems to be um, very proud of his resume of convictions that he's assisted with. Um, and so I want to talk about some of those. So first of all, we already know that this um, blood splatter analysis that he is known for is essentially been referred to by some people as junk science. The New York Times actually wrote a paper and uh, or published an article in May of 2018. Um, the title of the article was how an unproven forensic science became a courtroom staple. And it basically talks about it's actually a really interesting article, but it talks about how it's kind of, it's factless junk science, but it's been accepted as the standard. Um, so the one, one thing I think is really interesting about Tom Bevel 
is I'm going to read you off the list of the names of cases that he has been involved in that have been exonerated um, or that there is a lot of controversy around. So if you want to write down these names, here we go. So um, Tom Bevel was uh, a big part of helping convict Tim Masters. Tim Masters was convicted in March of 1999 for murder, and he used some of the same blood splatter, uh, cast off patterns as he calls it, except for Mr. Masters was exonerated by DNA in um, 2011. And he's actually gone on to write a book about his exoneration if anyone wants to support him. His name is Tim Masters. Um, the one case that I found, this is, this, the one case I found where he was hired by a defense attorney and he did not work for the prosecution was a case where a doctor in Oklahoma, Dr. John Baxter Hamilton, was charged uh, with murdering his wife. Interestingly enough, the high dollar attorney that John Baxter Hamilton hired to defend him, like within an hour of his wife being murdered, he hired this guy. That attorney, within 24 hours, hired Tom Bevel. He put a retainer on him as a defense witness just so he couldn't work for the prosecution because this attorney knew that this was his MO, that this would have been like his kind of case to represent. So the attorney hired him just to spite the prosecution. But the irony is that his testimony actually sealed like the nail in the coffin if you talk to some of the jurors from the John Baxter Hamilton case. So even though he was working for the defense, his testimony is what put Dr. Hamilton in prison. There's actually federal appeals going on right now because Dr. John Baxter Hamilton's attorneys believe that Bevel was what he they called a defense camp spy. So they believe that he was unethically giving information to the prosecution. Because remember, discovery is provided by the prosecution to the defense. Defense doesn't have to provide anything to the prosecution. So Hamilton's attorney has taken it all the way up to the, I think he actually lost the federal case. But um, yeah, he feels that he leaked information from the defense side to the prosecution side and Bevel actually put Hamilton away. Um, there's a case where co-defendants Ron Williamson and Dennis Fritz, they were a co-defendant case where Tom Bevel did his little blood splatter schmatter schmatter and helped them be convicted. They were exonerated by the Innocence Project in 1999. Um, and then there is another, and this, this case, I don't know, I want to dig more into this case just for myself, but um, Warren Horanek, H-O-R-I-N-E-K, he, um, his wife, he alleges that his wife committed schmooicide. The medic, the coroner's office ruled it a schmooicide. The lead investigator on the case and a second opinion medical doctor that, uh, the family hired. They all agreed. Her family did not agree. Her family said, no way, she would never do that. So her family hired Tom Bevel, and Tom Bevel used his blood splatter and got him convicted too. And it's a very controversial case. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about it if you Google it. And then there's a few more. David Cam with two M's, Jason Payne, and Kenneth Trentadu. David Cam, Jason Payne, and Kenneth Trentadu. All three of those are also cases that people are currently fighting for their innocence, but they all allege and have a lot of support online, kind of like Darley, um, that Tom Bevel helped seal their coffin and it's bullshit. All right, let's talk about the knife, okay? The first thing, I, oh, we're gonna be here for a while talking about this one. The first thing I wanna talk about for the knife is if you listen to the 911 call, one of the things that Darley says that was used against her repeatedly in the court of public opinion and also in trial is something that really hits close to me because I feel like every per if you are sitting in here and you care enough about this case to be listening to me talk about it, then this is something that you and I might also say, okay? 
she says on the 911 call something to the effect of and i haven't listened to it for myself in so long that i don't have the exact verbiage but she says something to the effect of he dropped the knife but i touched it we maybe we could have gotten prints okay yeah she probably watched 2020 but it was used against her that no innocent person says that and if your kids had just been unalived you wouldn't be worried about prints on a knife um, I would. The 911 caller told her not to touch anything after she said she touched it. But here's what's important about the 911 call, and we're going to go into that on a separate night. The 911 call, she was talking to the officer in front of her, and he was giving her a block of instructions. She was talking back to the officer. His name was Officer Waddell. She was talking back to him, but the 911 dispatcher thought she was talking to her. I was a 911 dispatcher. Rule number one is the moment your officer marks on scene you hang up the 911 call. She was on the phone for three and a half minutes after the officer was on scene, still on the whole phone with 911. Why? Why did 911 not disconnect the call? Because you know what? Darley was trying to appease both of them and it was used against her. She has the officer saying one thing and she's saying it back and then it's being transcribed as if that's what she's saying to the 911 call and that's not fair. Because when you hear the 911 transcription, you think it's a conversation between two people, not between three people. He didn't tell 911 he was there because he was in the bathroom throwing up. Because he went in the bathroom and he threw up before he did anything else. But anyways, he now works for the Plano Police Department. I graduated from high school in Plano. That doesn't make me very happy. So I think we can all agree that I would say something about the prince. I would think I was the lead investigator on the case. I would be telling them what they needed to do, what I did, what I think needed to be done to preserve evidence. But no, they used it against her because she said we could have gotten prints. Anyways, okay. So the state claims that one single knife was used that came from inside the Routier house, right? And the state won. So what they said is correct. So if we're going by what that what the state says, we have to believe there was only ever one Schmurder weapon that was used, right? How come that knife didn't have Devin's blood on it? Because the knife only has Darley and Damon's blood on it. So if we reasonable doubt, why is there no blood from Devin? Okay. This is where I believe there was ulterior motive for them only trying her for Damon's death. I used to think when I was younger, I used to think they only tried her for Damon's death because if they didn't win, Damon was younger. Damon met the capital Schmurder requirements. So if they didn't get a conviction, because they probably thought they had a shoddy case, because I think they had a shoddy case. Maybe they knew, they knew they didn't have a solid case, and so they were holding Devin's case so that they could retry her, right? That's what I always thought. Um, maybe they didn't try her for Devin's because literally there's no blood of Devin's on the one single knife that's used. And he, Greg Davis says this a 100,000 times, not really, but... Greg Davis will remind you that there is one single knife that was used and it came from inside the Routier's house. So these are my thoughts on the knife. Number one, where's, where's Devin's blood? Okay. Number two, people said, why, if you're going to, if someone was going to break into the house, um, why would they not bring their own knife? right? Everybody said that. Every armchair detective said that. If she says that someone, you know, if Darley's story is correct and someone broke into the house with the intention, you know, of hurting them or whatever, why, why wouldn't they bring their own knife? That doesn't make any sense. Criminals don't commit acts of violence without their own weapons. Okay, I, I, if we're applying that same rationale, 
If she was going to murder her own children, why would she do it with a kitchen knife from her own block of knives that were sitting on her countertop and there was only one missing? Like, like she thought nobody would figure that out. So we know that both boys were killed by stab wounds. I don't know if y'all are brave enough to, or if your mind works like my mind, but the boys' autopsy photos are on the internet, okay? Devin's stab wounds went completely through and through. Every single one of them went completely through and through. And when I say through, there is a picture, and if this is going to be too graphic, maybe you should step out for a second. They have him rolled over on the exam table, okay, while he's having the autopsy done. The photo is from behind his back, so this is... Devin. They've lifted him up and this is his back and his shoulders are rolled over a little bit and you can see all the stab wounds on his back. They are the full stab wound through and through. Okay. There was chips of concrete missing out of the foundation of the home. He was, Devin was stabbed so hard that it chipped the concrete. It went through his body. It went through the carpet. It went through the padding of the carpet and it chipped the concrete. So where's the, where, why is there no blood on the knife? You know what that tells me? Well, I don't know if, I don't know if I want to put my speculation on it because this doesn't have anything to do with the case. I said I was going to present facts. Okay, I'm going to tell you anyways. Um, you know what I think that means? Okay, hold on. So we know Devin went, the knives, they went through and through, and we know they broke the concrete on the bottom, right? We also know Devin was dead on arrival. He was beyond the point of help. Damon was crawling on his hands and knees, and he was gurgling when the paramedics arrived. That tells me that maybe the person who broke into the house that came with one knife broke the knife. Maybe the knife broke on David, on Devin, and he knew he still had to address Damon and Darley, and so he went to the kitchen. I wish y'all could see the inside of the house. I actually have videos of the inside of the house. It was for sale recently. Um, and someone that I know went inside the house and took a video. From the outside, the house looks gigantic, okay? It looks huge. It was very small on the inside. Like you would have been hard pressed to fit a, like a sectional couch like we have now. We have like these big oversized sectionals now. They didn't back in 96. You wouldn't be able to fit it in there. The kitchen and the dining in the living room are very, very close together. Maybe whoever brought the knife in broke his knife and didn't have a backup one. And we never got the first knife because he took it with him. And the only knife he left behind was the one that he panicked when Darley fought back and he dropped it. That was retrieved from the butcher block. I don't know. Maybe. But what I do know is that knife that they are saying in the transcript chipped the foundation should have had Devin's blood on it. And if that is the only single one knife, according to Greg Davis, there was one knife that was used. And if it was that knife from the butcher block, then it should have had Devin's blood on it. So, um, Wow, I think I talked fast. That's all I got. No, the knife was not chipped. You can see there's pictures of it in evidence. The knife that they say was the single knife was not chipped. And it was a cheap butcher block, like a 15 knife set that you get from, I don't know where. Darley had expensive stuff. But if I would have got it, it would have been from Walmart. It's not like it's it's restaurant grade knives that are going to hold up against concrete. There's no way that the, I, well, I'm not going to say there's no way. It would seem unlikely that that knife from that cheap kitchen residential butcher block set would have been able to do the damage to the concrete that it did without damaging the knife. Okay, sure. What time is it? Did I do okay? What did I think? I want some feedback. I've never done this before. I feel like I just went on a rampage by myself in a quiet room. 8.04. Wow, that was only 34 minutes. We did good. 
Oh, do you want to, okay, do you want to talk about, we can talk about some more of the DNA. I have some more of that. How many times were the boys stabbed? Ooh, okay, you guys are, I don't know. I don't know. That's my dog breathing in the background. I do not remember off the top of my head the number of times each boy was stabbed. Let me look it up. And like, here's, here's one thing I want to make sure I convey to y'all. Like the questions that I'm asking, like, okay, if he's saying this, but this happened, then how did this, like, those are legitimately my questions. And I don't understand how the jurors didn't have more questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. They both had four stab wounds. Do I think she was drugged? No. So I, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember what the toxicology report said. So when you guys are asking these questions, this is good for me because it reminds me like of things I need to go dig into and remind myself about. Um, she was taking Fin Fin. Now the documentary that I put the link up on my page, the YouTube one, that's three and a half hours long. They go into the science of Fin Fin and I haven't seen it yet, so I can't comment. I will say people have told me about it and I'm like, mm. but I say that about everything. Trust, but verify. I'm skeptical of everything until I see it for myself and then I research it for myself and it makes sense to me. The jury came home to the news every night. Yes, the jury was not sequestered. Also worth noting, one of the jurors has come out publicly and given statements to the press and spoken freely and said that he made the wrong decision. If he would have said that on decision day, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Maybe we would because they would have, I don't know. They probably would have retried her for the other one, but I think she was only tried for the one because the other would clear her of all charges. What? If they would have tried Devin first and, and she wouldn't have been convicted, they would have just tried her for Damon. So I don't agree with that. The one picture with Damon on this side had more than four wounds. Let's see. That's what... That's what her own website says. So I do refer to darlyfacts.com because it's... Every document from the transcript is on there. The whole... Everything you could want is on darlyfacts.com. Some of the links no longer work. Um, it seems like whoever was updating it stopped updating it around 2015, which I get it because that had already been nine years. Um, but instead of having to go to Dallas County's website and request these records yourself, you can get them from Darley's facts, darleyfacts.com. And it says, um, four stab wounds for Damon. So I don't know. She was worth more dead than alive. My money is on the husband. There was a $250,000 life insurance policy on her. Now we are gonna talk about life insurance. I didn't think we'd be done so quickly. A lot of people, uh, the state says that her motive was financial. Um, we're gonna go into all of this later. So I'm just gonna briefly touch on this. They were in debt. They were living beyond their means. I think a lot of people are, but whatever. The, at the end of the day, she was living beyond her means. And that is what her financial documents did show. Um, People have said that she did it for financial reasons. Darley did everything over the top. Darley drove a Jaguar. Darley lived in a big, beautiful house. She wore gigantic diamonds on every finger. She had gigantic bleach teased up hair when she was all done up. She had really big, brand new breast implants, which she paid $2,000 for in 1996. It was a decent amount of money. Um, she was not a suspect yet. She did not know she was a suspect at the time that she planned the funerals. 
she paid more for her, those funerals than she received in life insurance money because she did everything over the top. This was 1996. Their funerals, they had a, a dual funeral and it was $13,500. And she had $5,000 life insurance policy on each boy. Yes, the husband was upstairs asleep. Another thing about the insurance policies is that if you look at the evidence photos, there's a nightstand and on one of the nightstands was a Pendaflex, like what a lot of people keep their financials in, like the brown Pendaflex that has the little electri uh, elastic tie on it. Um, that's a good question and we're gonna talk about that. In one of the photos it was closed and in one of the photos it was open. Why? That means the police had to have done that. Someone at the crime scene had to have done that, but they photographed it and presented the one of it open, stating that she had been going through financials before she went to sleep and was stressed about money and that's why she did it. Was the jury allowed to hear about Devin? Why was the, oh, was the jury? Yes, so she was only tried for Damon, but the entire transcript is about both of them. It's, it's not even right, it shouldn't even have been allowed. If you read the transcript on darlyfacts.com, they talk about Devin constantly. Who did the sock belong to? It doesn't have a foreign profile on it, they say. They say it has Darlie's DNA. I don't know who it belonged to. How did the husband not hear the commotion? Good fucking question. Um, I will say that people who have been inside that house have said, if you yell from downstairs, it's so cheaply made that it echoes. The bedroom was right above, like right, uh, right above where it all happened, all the commotion happened. And you can hear everything. Why do you think her story changed on how she woke up? Trauma, trauma response. I have thank you letters that I wrote after my dad's funeral I bought a package of stationery through the funeral home. It came with like envelopes and it, it, it matched the, um, the paper matched the flyer, what do you call a program or whatever. It was this whole set. I apparently sat down and wrote out thank you cards to everyone who came to my dad's funeral and I never mailed a single one. And when I found them, uh, that was in September. We moved into our house in July. We, we bought our house in July. So in July, when I was packing everything up and I opened those, they were sealed and everything. And I opened them and read them. It was like, like I was reading something from the dead. I have no memory of writing those cards. Not a single memory. It didn't even come back to me. It's not like I saw it and was like, oh shit, I forgot about these. None. So why did her memory change? I think trauma. Where's the husband now? I don't know. The last time I heard about him, he used to come to our games. I was a cheerleader with her sister and he used to come to our games. Um, the last time I heard about him, he, ha he was living in Lubbock. I think he's remarried. I've heard he's remarried now. Couldn't they have measured the wounds to see if the wounds matched? They may have. I don't remember, so that's something else I'm gonna look into. The other thing is, you can't always measure, a knife is not always a straight in and out. If I go in and I turn my hand, that's gonna change the size of the wound, right? Or if the victim, if I go in and the victim fights and pulls, I think just, this is just my layperson mind. If they didn't match, that's not indicative that that wasn't the same knife. Did the autopsies of the boys align with stab? Okay, so I don't remember, but I'm gonna look into it. But I would say probably yes, because if not, the state's defense, the state's position would not have been that there was one single knife. Because through the, through the trial, Greg Davis and the prosecutors all said there was one knife and it came from the Routier house. So if the autopsy had indicated different ones, I don't think they would have taken that position. But honestly, nothing would surprise me at this point. But again, I'm not a knife expert. I don't know how this works, but I would think that if there's movement or depending on angle, how do you know that it was one? I don't know. Are you sure he lives in Wills Point? I know he Darlie's mom lives in Wills Point. Didn't the husband try to pay someone to rob the home? Yes. Do we want to talk about that? I have his affidavit. 
That would be very interesting if Darren is living in Will's Point because that's where Darlie's mom is living. I'm interested in that. Because I know her mom. Anyway. Um, yeah, she had defense wounds on her hand. The arm was a defense wound. And if you look on the at the pictures I posted, and they're also online, literally the inside of her arm is completely black and blue. I, I this is, I don't want to force my bias too much, but how in the hell do you make that many bruises on your arm yourself? What do you do? You ram your arm repeatedly into a wall because you couldn't do it with your hand because you'd have hand marks. Like it is a solid black and blue bruise. Didn't he said he made it up to help her case? Y'all want to, okay, look, we have, let's talk about one more thing before we get off here. We've got about 15 more minutes. Do we want to talk about Darren's affidavit? Or do we want to talk about the DNA? Oh, both. Darren. Katie says DNA. Darren. Everybody says Darren. Okay. So, let me pull up her mom's affidavit also. Because her, mom's, her mom gave an affidavit at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to read the affidavit. I know, Katie, I'm the same way. I would have voted DNA. Okay, so... My name is Darren Routier. I'm over the age of 21. I reside in McKinney, Texas. This was a long time ago. He doesn't live in McKinney anymore. I'm capable and fully competent to make this affidavit. The statement herein are true and correct to the best of my personal knowledge. I am the husband of the petitioner, Darlie Lynn Routier. In 1994, I spoke to a person about my Jaguar automobile. One thing I want to note is that the Jaguar was not at the house the night of the incident. It was at the shop. So it would appear no one was home. Remember that. My name is Darren, uh, okay. In 1994, I spoke to a person about my Jaguar automobile. In that conversation, I said, it wouldn't bother me, and that's in quotation marks, it wouldn't bother me if the Jaguar was stolen. That person then stole the Jaguar. I don't know if they got the same Jaguar back or if they bought another one, but they did drive a Jaguar in 1996. In March or April of 1996, remember June 5th, well, June 6th, but the night they went to sleep, June 5th is when it happened. Um, in March or April of 1996, I asked my father-in-law, Robbie Jean Key, if he knew anyone who would agree to burglarize my home as part of an insurance scam. I said that I would arrange for my family to be absent from my home at 5801 Eagle Drive, that someone who I would hire would come to the house and take away the furniture and other items from my house in a U-Haul truck, and that I would then pay that person from the proceeds of the resulting insurance payments. Thank you. Between March 1996 and May of 1996, I told multiple people of my planned insurance scam. Okay, this is the part that I, I forgot about this until I reread this today. And I was like, fuck, how did I forget that? In the late evening on June 5th, 1996, I had a verbal disagreement with my wife, Darlie Lynn Routier. During that discussion, she asked me for a marital separation. I know Denny. I know that. It's her mom. Her mom is in Will's Point. I'm just kidding. But look at you looking out. Um, I first met with attorney Douglas Mulder in July of 1996. I met at least once a week with Mr. Mulder. The subject of the meetings was Mr. Mulder's, Mulder's, Mr. Mulder's potential representation of my wife, Darlie Lynn Routier, and I in her criminal trial. This has always stuck out to me. The subject of the meetings was Mr. Mulder's potential representation of my wife, Darlie Lynn Routier, and I. 
I don't want to read too much into that. But he was never charged. Do you think maybe he thought he might be charged, like guilty conscience? Or he was talking about them as a team? Because when I talk about my husband, I say we all the time. Because that's my ride or die, and I'm his ride or die, and we are it. But anyways... I continued to meet with Mr. Mulder in August of 1996. During one of the meetings I had with Mr. Mulder, he told me that the court-appointed attorney in my wife's case, Wayne Huff and Douglas Parks, had confided in him that they were going to try and portray me as the person guilty of the murder of my sons, Damon and Devin, because they thought that I had something to do with the deaths of my son. I told Mr. Mulder that if we hired him, I did not want him to go after me. Mr. Mulder agreed that if hired to represent my wife, he would not argue as part of the defense that I was in any way responsible for the death of my children. Between July of 1996 and late September 1996, I continued to meet regularly with Mr. Mulder. On September 30th of 1996, Mr. Mulder represented me at a show cause hearing before Judge Toll where the state of Texas alleged that I violated a gag order in the criminal case against my wife. In both September and October of 1996, I believe, based on Mr. Mulder's comments to me and his representation of me at the show cause hearing, that he was my attorney. On October 21st of 1996, Mr. Mulder became the lead counsel in my wife's criminal trial. And so I'm going to have to go back and dig. I think what this is referring to is that he thought he had attorney-client privilege with Mr. Mulder, and that's why he spoke to him. But then they ended up turning around and hiring Mr. Mulder for Darley to prevent the court-appointed attorneys coming after him. And then Mr. Mulder violated alleged attorney-client privilege. Darren thought it was attorney-client privilege. Mr. Mulder did not think it was attorney-client privilege. And I say that, okay, listen to this. So, um, was the night of the murders the first time she stated she wanted a divorce? I don't know. I want to say yes, but I do not know the answer to that for sure. Okay, so then Darley's mom, her name is Darley Key, because both their names were Darley. So to keep them separate, we refer to her as Darley Key. Um, Darley Key also gave an affidavit. And one thing that um, was really, like, really stuck out to me is how much they paid for Mr. Mulder, which I'm going to tell you in a second. Because I think we can all agree that he did a really bad job. Like a really, 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 really bad job. My name is Darley Key. I'm the mother of Darley Lynn Routier, who was accused of murder by the state of Texas in the capital case of Texas versus Routier. In July of 1996, my son-in-law, Darren Routier, and I searched for counsel to represent my daughter in her capital trial. Over the course of my search, various individuals suggested that we retain attorney Douglas Mulder. Darren and I met with him for the first time in July of 96, and we met with him again many times in August of that year. During one of our August meetings, Mr. Mulder told Darren that me, told Darren and me that Douglas Parks and Wayne Huff, the court-appointed attorneys for my daughter, intended to blame Darren for the murder of my grandson, Damon. Darren then told Doug Mulder that one of the reasons we were going to retain him was because Doug was not buying into the theory that Darren was involved in this crime. Mr. Mulder assured us that if he was in charge of the case, he would not go after Darren. We decided to hire Mr. Mulder, and he became my daughter's lawyer. On October 21st of 1996, we paid him $95,000. $95,000. Dollars they paid him and he did a garbage fucking job of representing her didn't call a single expert witness allowed the silly string video to be entered into evidence when it was illegally taped and obtained which we're going to go into that later how much is that in today's money let's see That would be $190,192 in today's money. Yeah. So. So. 
We're gonna talk about the silly string video later, but the main thing I wanna talk about with the silly string video, and then we're gonna jump off of here, is um, that was Den that was um, that was her sister's idea. Her sister was in eighth grade. Her sister used to babysit the nephews. They were very, very close. They have another sister. Um, my friend, her sister was the youngest. She's the baby, and then there's one in between. And um, the silly string was her idea. She bought it at the dollar store. She said, this is what they would have wanted. And so Darlie was giving her baby sister what she thought they wanted. What they didn't show was Darlie like bawling her eyes out and having a panic attack before that. But then they decided to end on a positive note because that was her baby sister's wishes. And if you were her baby sister, I would imagine that, can you imagine the guilt you would carry? You made a decision when you were in eighth grade that very likely impacted your sister and the rest of your family for the rest of your life. Like that is not fair. And they bugged the gravesite without a warrant. Now, what? Uh, the website is darlyfacts.com. Now, it's a poorly made website. Um, people are doing this out of the kindness of their heart because they believe in her. Um, so it is, it's kind of a poor made website. Some of the links don't work. Not, none of the dates have been updated, like the what's going on and the current news has not been updated since 2015, but all of the documents are on here. Um, she doesn't have an execution date right now because of appeals. So we're going to, we're going to get into all that y'all. We haven't even touched the surface. There's a whole lot more to go over. Why wouldn't a $95,000 she's, uh, serving in the, she has a death penalty. She's on death row. What's up crazy Alex. Why wouldn't a $95,000 lawyer have that thrown out? <laughs> Let me know when you find out girl. I don't know. Why wouldn't they call an expert witness? I don't know. They didn't call a single one. Not a single one. DNA testing is still in limbo. Yes. There are still multiple pieces of DNA, of evidence that have never been tested for DNA in this case. We're going to get to that. We don't have time tonight. I don't want to keep anybody too much. Um, yeah. The sock has been tested. The knife has been tested. Um, Why hasn't everything else been tested? There's court orders. I have it all written down. There are multiple court orders starting in 2008, 2014, 2018, and 2021. Multiple courts at multiple levels have ordered testing. It hasn't happened yet. Yes, the New York Innocence Project. So there's a there's like the one big Innocence Project and then there's different state branches. Darley has four lawyers. She has one in Dallas, she has one in Houston, and she has two in New York. The New York Innocence Project attorneys are the ones that got the most recent and what I would consider the most long overdue court order for DNA testing. And that was in September. They came on in April of 2021 and that order, they got that order approved in September of 2021. Isn't that wild? Like, can you imagine? Can, she is sitting on death row, y'all. She is sitting on death row. And this shit hasn't been tested. It's been 27 years. 27 years. Yes, Lisa, we hadn't even got there yet. Pin that comment. Hold on. Lisa's right. We're jumping ahead, but Lisa's right. And guess what? Preliminarily... They said it was Darlie's hair because there was a blonde hair stuck in the screen and come to find out it belonged to one of the police officer's wife, which I get. Don't get me wrong. My husband tells me like, cause I got a lot of hair, right? My husband says like, he finds my hair in his underwear. He finds them everywhere. Yeah. But guess what? Preliminarily, they said it was Darlie's. Can y'all imagine? And again, I, I don't know what happened. People ask me all the time, what do you think happened? I don't know. I don't know and I don't really care. I mean, I have I have a few theories, but but the main thing is I, I just think shoddy police work, the state of Texas doesn't want to put their tail between their legs and admit that they fucked up. 
Can y'all imagine? Reasonable doubt. At a minimum, there is reasonable doubt. Is there anyone in here? This case happened in 1996. June 6th, 1996. Is there anyone in here who, after listening to everything I said, would say, no, there, there's no reasonable doubt. Nope, I still think she did it. Like, I don't think the answer to that question is yes, and I just cannot, I can't, I can't wrap my mind around it. I don't get it. I don't get how it, okay, so for those of y'all who watched The Last Defense, we can't watch it anymore. The link is down. I'm waiting for some one of y'all like internet stalker sleuths to find it somewhere else. Um, do y'all remember that female juror from Kerrville, Texas, who sat down and gave the interview? And the very first thing she says out of her mouth is something about like, well, I already knew she was innocent. I don't remember exactly what she said. I wish I would have rewatched it before the link went down. But she says something like, I already knew she killed her kids. It was like, why were you on the jury? <laughs> One thing that gets me about people who say that she did it is for what? What was her motive? Some people said she didn't want to be a mom anymore. Her kids were in the way. She still had a seven month old sleeping upstairs. He's not going to disappear. Like, she still would have had to parent at least one kid. Money. What's, what's $10,000 going to do for you when you have a $13,500 uh, funeral? That baby is now all grown up. His name is Drake. Did the husband try to get her out of jail? She was denied bond. She has, since the day she was arrested, she was arrested June 18th of 1996. She's never been out. Michelle, we would also like more DNA testing done. It's been ordered since 2008. Does he see his mom? Um, One thing, I can't comment, I don't know. I know when he was younger, yes. Um, one thing I want everyone to remember is that in Texas on death row, you don't have any physical touch during visitation. It's all through glass. The last offense used to be on Hulu. It's not anymore. Um, Drake hasn't physically touched his mom since he was seven months old. So paying is not the issue. Paying is not the issue. There's actually a millionaire in Texas who is paying for everything for Darlie. All of her, he believes in her innocence and he has been paying for her defense for many, many years. So her defense is not costing her anything. And the Innocence Project does everything for free. In my personal opinion, the state of Texas does not, they know that there's discrepancies and they're not complying because they don't want to be proven wrong. Have y'all watched any of the interviews with Greg Davis? She's filed for motions to get a retrial. She's been denied. I never knew it was so complex. Thank you. There's so much more. Girl, girl, there's so much more. We're going to go into so much more. I got this from... Cajun Press. What's up, Fancy Jen? Yep, they're going to have to pay her. And I think it's not even about the money. I think Greg Davis made such a public display of this. Do y'all remember when he called Darlie's mom white trash? No, trailer trash. She did. She was struggling with postpartum. We're, having, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So... Funny story, they lived, a, I can't remember what street they lived on. They either lived one or two blocks over from me. And we didn't live in a trailer. We lived in brick and mortar houses. We lived in conservative, lower end housing. 
but we all lived in brick houses that we owned. It wasn't a high rental neighborhood, but yet Greg Davis called her mom trailer trash in front of news cameras on national TV. What is believed to be the motive of the intruder just to kill? Nothing was missing. All of Darley, Darley took all her jewelry off. And when I tell y'all Darley wore a lot of jewelry, Darley was very for show. Darley was very for show. You can look up the crime scene photos. All of her jewelry was like on, they had like a little, uh, like a peep window. I don't know what you would call it. Not an island. It wasn't as big as an island, but it was like a flat little surface between the kitchen and the living room. And she had all of her jewelry laid out and none of it was missing. And she said that. On, it's on the 911 call because remember, she's, the 911 call didn't hang up because the officer didn't tell the dispatch he was on scene. So she's talking to the officer, but being recorded on 911. And that's another thing that she says um, that's used against her is she says, none of my jewelry is even missing. Well, again, true crime. We would all probably do the same thing, don't you think? We would talk about, oh my God, I touched the knife. My prints now are going to be mixed in with that. And if you're trying to assess what's the motive and you're a decently intelligent person, you might be thinking out loud and being like, but nothing's taken. Well, when she said none of my jewelry was taken or was any of my jewelry taken, they were saying she put more value on her jewelry than her children's lives. You need to be a crime reporter, so thank you. Tommy Lynn Sells was in prison in another state on that date. Jen, it's not just one episode. Okay, I want to clear this up. Jasmine, I think it was uh, life insurance money for the husband. I said it. Um, there is a one series... One episode series on YouTube and also on ABC. It's called 2020 The Last Defense. That's not the series that I'm referring to. I think it's good to watch. Y'all, it can't hurt. It's a summary of all four hours of The Last Defense put into one. So when The Last Defense got released, 2020 did an interview with Darley and talked about some of the things that were in the last defense. And it's definitely a, a good representation of her, but it's not as near, it's not a deep dive like the four hour of the series was. Um, yes, they said there was a lot of break-ins in her neighborhood around the time of the murder. Y'all were getting so far ahead of ourselves. There is, there is a connection to the police chief's son who was a drug addict. Yep, Holly, I agree with that also. So back then, that neighborhood, I mean, it's still a nice neighborhood. Don't get me wrong. The house just sold um, in April. It sold for like $450,000 or something. So it's still a nice neighborhood. It's still a decent neighborhood. But back in 96, it was the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, it was the who's who of the Jones of the Jones of the Jones, right? So, a lot of people have said that it's not on there, Misty. A lot of people looked up and said that the full four-hour, the four-hour episodes are not on there. But someone else told me they were, so I put it in a video, and then everybody and their mom wanted to message me and tell me that I was wrong. So, okay, I got it. I was wrong. Um, when I say the house was cheaply made, okay, you know if you've ever built a house, like some... Some builders, you can have four builders in the same neighborhood and two of them can be way better quality. The house they lived in, like it echoed really badly. Um, the walls were thin. It just wasn't, it wasn't a custom built home. Okay, it was beautiful. It was big. But, you know, the, the rooms weren't soundproof. That's what I'll say. Thank you. I got it at Goodwill. Um, see, fuck, I got ADD. Katie, Katie, I need you to help me. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, okay. That neighborhood was like the neighborhood back then, right? It was the kind of neighborhood. I don't know if y'all have ever lived in neighborhoods like this or had friends that lived in neighborhoods like this, but I was a 911 dispatcher and I used to get these all the time. People would literally call 911 and be like, um, I live in Stonebridge Manor and there is like this old rundown like 
1981 Ford Mustang and it does not belong in our neighborhood. And I want to be like, what if someone's daughter is dating someone and his parents made him buy their own car and that's all he could afford, Karen? Well, several calls came in about a car in the neighborhood that didn't belong there. And that car may or may not have been tied to the police chief's son who was a drug addict. Because then the question is, who did it? I don't really care, to be honest with you. I just want Darlie to be freed so badly that let somebody else figure out who did it. I don't know. But if she didn't, let her out. Now, let me Google Tommy Lincells because so many people have brought this up to me. And I'm going off memory, right? And it's been a probably 13 years since I really dove back into it. Um... But I am pretty positive that I remember that it was proved that he was incarcerated in another state on that date. Yep. Yeah, those bruises. I don't know how she would have got that. She would have literally had to have run herself repeatedly into the wall and make the same direct contact on all of her arm to get those bruises. You think we can ask Siri, where was Tommy Lynn Sells? Where was Tommy Lynn Sells on June 6th, 1996? I'm going to have to dig. But that is a pretty widespread point of view. A lot of people think that it could have been Tommy Lynn Sells because he had ties to the area. All right, y'all. Life insurance. Uh, the boys each had a $5,000 policy, so that's $10,000 total, but their funeral cost $13,500, and that was before Darlie had no idea at that point that she was being looked at, so it's not like she could have intentionally spent more to negate the motive. And no one has ever said that they think she intentionally spent more, but that's how my mind works, is that when you tell people that, well, she... Couldn't have been that's why she did it because she spent more. People would say, well, of course she spent more. That's convenient. I don't think so. Lie detector test. I don't know if they did them. Lie detector tests are garbage. Give me a lie detector test at any given moment and I'm going to fail. If I haven't taken my boost bar, I'm going to fail. That's why they're not admissible in, in court. Which I don't even understand why they're allowed to be given anymore because you cannot use them in a state of, or in the court of law because they're not credible. If you get me too stressed out and you ask me if my name is Brandy, I'm going to fail that fucking test. Jen, you missed like the whole damn thing, girl. I'm going to make videos on all of this and put it up. But yes, they were living beyond their means. I know. How can someone get a huge bruise like that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if someone was fighting you, if a grown man was fighting you, I think you could. I had a bruise like that. I had um, I had ulnar, ulnar nerve transposition surgery. I don't know if you can see my scar. My arm looked like Darlie's arm, but I had surgery. Um, Jen, I'm have a I have a playlist on my page. You can get caught up, and we're gonna do this maybe like once a week or something. What did I think of him and his character? Um, have y'all watched the video footage? I can't remember if I watched it or if I read it. It's been so long. Of the interview, of his police interview. He talks about how hot his wife is. It's, it's weird. But I don't like to, but it could have been a trauma response. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to have to really dig and remind myself of the details. As I'm talking, I'm like, I don't know if I should be saying this because I can't remember where I got the information, but I'm going to find the police chief's son's tie to 
the case. Y'all are making me dig way back. I love this. Did he give off weird vibes? No. One thing I thought was interesting was that he got a full sleeve of one of the boys and not the other. Now, maybe he was waiting. If sleeves are expensive. Well, he did a half sleeve. Sleeves were expensive, so maybe he started one and was waiting to finish it and, and then to be able to do the other one. I don't know, but I thought that was strange that he would walk around with like cut off shirts with his arms showing and he very clearly had one of his boys portrait tattooed on a half sleeve. I don't remember which one he got first. I don't know if Darlie's family is still close with him. I don't know. I have communicated with the, with her sister a little bit. Um, I'm respectful of the trauma that it's put the family through. I send her a message. I wait for her to respond. She's not big on TikTok. Um, and if she responds, then I'll ask her another question. But like, as of right now, she hasn't responded to my last question, but she did come on one of my lives the other day. She said I popped up on her For You page, but, um, and she was sharing information about the case freely. But if you, um, and I'm not gonna tag her or put her name out there because she had a previous incident where another TikTok true crime person um, was trying to cover Darlie's case and reached out to her kids and was being very aggressive with her kids about their aunt being a schmurderer. And that's just completely uncalled for. Those kids were not even born when this happened. So I think I'm treading lightly. Is it too old to get documents from the case? No, they're, they're online. You can go to Dallas County's website. You have to have the case number. And the case number can be found on the website. So the, the website is darlyfacts.com. And it has most of the documents on there. But if you wanted to look for yourself, you can go on a Dallas County's website. You have to look, um, go to Dallas County uh, Open Records. Just Google Dallas County Open Records. And if you choose felony court, files or I can't remember what the name of it is but it's separated by misdemeanor and felony you have to know the case number I'm pretty sure I don't think there's an option to search by name Viola Davis the actor the actress the very famous actress I know you know who Viola Davis is this is Viola Davis Yep. Do we think she's innocent? Do you think she's innocent? That's not true. She didn't divorce Darren because one of the boys looked just like him. No. She divorced Darren because she wanted him to go on and live her li his life. They stayed married for many years and he still stands by her. Christy girl, you better stop it. Hi, Melissa. Does the family feel like he had some hand in it? I've never asked the family that. I don't know. I know that Darlie has been asked about it in a letter that I read for myself. I've written with Darlie a few times. I'm actually going to write her again. I, I keep saying I'm going to do it tonight. Thanks, girl. They're Mardi Gras. They're, they're New Orleans earrings. Um, I might write her tonight. But um, someone's asked her in a letter, and all she said was, I wonder about that now. But it, you have to know Darlie. You have to know her. Like, what you see on TV, like the... A lot of people have said that they think she's faking, like, because she, she has this, like, very... I don't know how to explain it. That's her. She's back in the day a lot of people would say she was beautiful. She had she had a little snatched waist and she had these big implants and she had, you know, the higher the hair, the closer to Jesus. It's a Texas thing. You know, she had all the diamonds. But she was so sweet. Just the kindest, sweetest. I don't know. What does she look like? 
that's the other thing is she's also gotten a lot of heat because there's pictures that have come out of her like being taken in prison and she's still got the big hair and the makeup and she's posing and it's like that's who she is like if you are the type of person that values your looks and you value putting yourself together like what do they want her to do just whittle away like a, a flower that hasn't been watered like you you can't make everybody happy Okay, so here's the bruise. I don't know if y'all can see it. Can y'all see her arm? So, like, this is one of the pictures that she has, like, it's a really, really bad quality, but see that big one? That's her in jail. People are like, how can she still be so vain in prison? Well, I don't know, Karen. She's naturally pretty. And you know what? Maybe she got seven extra dollars on commissary and she bought herself some powder and some mascara. The new boyfriend situation was strange. Who has a new boyfriend? Yes, that's Stella snoring. Darley has a boyfriend? Where did you hear that? Yeah, she probably feels like that's all she has at this point. And also, Darley believes she's going to get out. If you talk to Darley, Darley believes she is not jaded. She believes, I don't remember that being on the, on the series. Are, are y'all sure? I don't remember that. I wish I would have watched it. I'm such a fucking procrastinator. Okay, if you talk to Darlie, Darlie thinks she's going to get out. Darlie is still optimistic. She's not jaded. Um, she thinks she's going to get out. And so you know what? Good for her for still having something to get up and look forward to every day to keep herself in her high spirits. If you write Darlie, she, she writes everyone back. She handles all of her own legal stuff. Like she is involved in every single thing that's done. I would imagine you need something like some stay at home moms say they have to get up every day, get dressed and make their bed so that they have a purpose. Maybe that's her purpose. I don't remember. I, she definitely did not have a boyfriend back then. That was absolutely never on the table. That was never brought up. That was never a speculation. And David, I don't remember anything in the series about her having a boyfriend. If I'm wrong, y'all let me know. Um, so there is a link in my, on my page to a documentary on YouTube. The guy is very boring. It sounds like a mandatory training you have to take when you get hired at a job. It's really, really boring, but it's he has good information. The first one hour is the state's position, and the last part is um, the defense. And I haven't even finished the last part yet because, God, I couldn't make it through his voice, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, it's really bad, Christy. He's not monotone. He's actually more sing-songy. And he talks to you like this. And the states will, the state of Texas will tell you that Darlie Routier killed her two children. What I would like to talk to you about is how this is the most fascinating case in my legal career. It's horrible. It's horrible. No offense, you got a good, you got a great successful YouTube channel. Obviously, people love you. Do you, man? Do you? Do you? <laughs> hey, you got more subscribers than I do, so do your thing. Do your thing. Who he went ring shop? David, what are we talking about now? Darren is remarried. Is that what we're talking about?
Thank you. Somebody's going to have to send me some receipts because I've never heard anything about that. I don't remember that. Viola Davis did not play Darlie. She paid and produced the series. I don't remember. See, I haven't watched it in so long. But you know what? I hope she has a boyfriend. She deserves a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whoever. She deserves somebody. Yeah, Viola Davis did not play Darlie. Viola Davis produced the series, funded and produced the series, and she took it to Sundance, and she showed it at Sundance, and Hulu bought it. It was on Hulu for a while, but it's not anymore. It, nobody has been able to tell anybody where, trust me, if there was another place y'all could watch it, I would know by now because I get 400 messages a day of people telling me they think they found it, but nobody, it hasn't worked out. None of the links have worked. Yeah, at least you won't call him the wrong name. <laughs> yeah, so Drake was raised by his grandparents. I don't know why it's unavailable. I don't know. I don't know if we broke the link. And what's weird is when you went to watch it on Vimeo, it said it was supported by Free Darley. So you, you would think they would want, I mean, obviously whoever was hosting it saw a huge influx in views. Maybe they wanted to put it somewhere that we'd have to pay for it. I don't know. I, hell, I'll pay for it. I will pay for it. I'll pay for it for everybody because that's how much I believe in it. Okay, I'm gonna have to find episode four and rewatch it. I don't remember any part about her boyfriend. But also, sometimes I have a horrible memory. Sometimes I remember everything, like the police chief's son and blah, 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 but sometimes I don't remember shit. No one has been able to find all four episodes. Okay, here's where you can, we're gonna wrap it up. I'm getting off here in a minute. Here's where you can, here's what you can watch. There's a YouTube video, the link's in my bio. Three hours and 15 minutes. If you can put up with the dude's voice, it's a great perspective. They also go over a case where one of the states executed a man and did the DNA testing that he had been requesting his whole time he was in prison. Um, and he had been denied every time they executed him. And afterwards, the Innocence Project got the DNA testing approved. And guess what? He was innocent after they executed him. Um, so you can watch the YouTube video. You can also watch the 2020 episode on YouTube. I think it's also on ABC called The Last Defense. It is a very condensed version of The Last Defense. Um, I have a link, but you have to click out of 700 pop-ups before it will play. Oh, shit. Why didn't he raise him? And which set of grandparents? Darren's parents. He actually moved, his senior year, he moved in with Darlie's sister, the one I know. He had some health issues that are not my place to discuss, but um, Darlie's sister was a nurse at Children's, and he moved in with her for that reason. Oh, everything that's out there that I don't tell you about is bias against her. Yeah, there's a ton of shit out there against her. I'm not going to tell you what they are. You can go out and find them on your own. But um, yeah, there are a ton of documentaries that are against her. No, they're not married. Thank you. I got this from Cajun Press. Her name is Sheila on TikTok. She's Cajun Press. No, they're not married. They got divorced in, I think, 2011. Because Darlie said she wanted him to go on and move on with his life. I love Lester Holt. I do. How much does the cup hold? 
Shit, I don't know. It held, it held a whole bottle of water and this much. Full bottle plus this. All right, y'all. 16 ounces. Okay, maybe the other bottle wasn't full because that doesn't seem like 16 ounces. It also was like almost overflowing when I put the lid on. Yes. Well, I believe it. I don't know. Maybe it was a mutual decision, but I know she didn't fight it. I know she was supportive of it. You can even read, if you Google their name and like read articles and stuff, she says that I wanted him to go on and live his life. All right, y'all, my head hurts. I've been talking to myself in this room for a long time. The lights are hot. Um, go to my bio. Do y'all like that? Bye, bye, bye. Oh, so dumb. So dumb. Okay, I'm going to make videos. I was going to make videos as soon as we got off here, but now I'm a little depleted, and I don't think I'm going to be making any videos. But um, also, maybe that's why people should be in my live. You want to watch my, you want the information? <laughs> Come to my live. Everybody thank Katie, because you're welcome, David. Everybody thank Katie. Um, Katie taught me how to schedule a live that y'all could subscribe to, or RSVP to. I don't even know what the fuck it's called. If you do have any questions or anything I didn't address, just go on to one of my videos and leave the question. And I, I really do try to live in the comments and all of that stuff. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the DNA. Oh, we're done, girl. We are done. We covered a lot more than I thought we would. All right. And uh, Stella says... Stella says time to go to bed. I don't know when. I will schedule it though. And y'all can check. It'll show up on my videos. Okay. I appreciate every single one of you. Truly. If y'all find the last offense, all four parts, let me know. I don't want to click through 700 pop-ups. I'm not going to lie. I'm not doing that. I'm afraid I'm going to get a virus on my computer. Is there a way I can save this live? It's an hour and a half. I probably can't post it. But that's a good idea. <gasps> I could post this on YouTube. What? What? Do they let you do that? <gasps> Fuck yeah. Y'all are geniuses. Y'all are geniuses. That's awesome. I do. I am going to come out with shirts. soon. Okay. While I have y'all in here. Um, I don't know if y'all saw the video I posted where I asked you guys to watch my videos and um, like and comment because my husband and I are trying to pay for a second round of IVF. It is very, very, very outside of my comfort zone for me to ask for help. That's why I want to earn it from you guys. And I said, I'm not going to have a GoFundMe. I'm not going to have my cash app. I'm not going to have my Venmo, but I want to be able to earn y'all's time and your time converts to dollars for me on TikTok. Um, Crazy Alex. I don't know if any of y'all follow her. She is a creator in Mississippi. She has over a million followers. She and I have spoken and she paid part of her way through IVF by selling t-shirts. $20, one color, one style, 20 bucks, $5 shipping um, as a way to ask people to support your journey and allow you to deliver a good instead of just accepting donations. And so I'm going to do that. I have my Shopify set up. If y'all want to see notification, go somewhere with your fucking self. Okay, um, I have, I have the transfers. If you guys would like a sneak peek since you're in here, I haven't shown anyone this, but also I don't match. Y'all are about to see what I have going on below the sweater and I don't match.
So it says, be the village. We all need a little help. Um, I have 94 of these and Crazy Alex gave them to me for free, y'all. I cannot tell you how awesome it is. She taught me every little detail, like no gatekeeping, no secrets. She walked me through literally every detail, where to order my shipping labels, where to order my bags, the cheapest vendor to get them through. She gave me 94 of these to start out with. She told me what heat press to order. She told me where to order my shirts. She told me how to do the pre-sale. Um, she told me how to do everything. And she said, when God blessed her with a baby, she made it her mission to spread as much knowledge. She was willing to do it for me. She was gonna do all of this for me through her site. But she said, if she taught me how to do it, I would be able to continue doing it afterwards if I wanted to. Um, but she, out of the kindness of her, of her heart, was going to do everything for me until I raised enough to pay for my second round of IVF. Get your shit together, Brandy. You know, and the sad thing is that, and I was honest with her, um, I had to unfollow her for a little while because it triggered me because it worked for her and she got her baby. And then I finally got to a place where I refollowed her because I love her. And, um, and she did all this for me. She taught me, she basically taught me how to run a business in an hour. And yeah. So I'm going to work on it tonight. Um, I don't know what, um, her name is Crazy Alex. I don't know what color I'm going to put it on. I only have 94 of these. Um, I say only. If I sell 10 shirts, I'll be surprised. But um, I'm not going to have a bunch of options. There's not going to be a bunch of different, I got to keep it simple because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> I think I'm going to do them on gray shirts because white is, they, I don't know. I don't like white shirts. So maybe gray. I think gray is pretty cheap. So let's be honest. I'm doing this to, uh, I'm doing this to make money. So I got to keep my cost as low as possible. Another thing Alex did for me, as you guys know, those little like silicone bracelets that people do for fundraisers, she bought me 700 of them and she's sending them to me for free. So, um, it says be the village hashtag IVF. Um, and then she gave me 94 of these and um, she told me I should do like a, a bundle version. Like if you get a shirt and um, a bracelet, it's like this much or you can get the bracelet by itself. Um, I just don't know why so much. She doesn't even know me. She's never even met me. This took a deep south turn. <laughs> yeah, she's a great person. So, um, I don't know how to do mock-ups. I don't know. Like, I think I'm just going to make a thank you. I'm just going to, like, make a video and hold this up and be like, y'all want a shirt? <laughs> I hope I don't screw I'm so intimidated, y'all. I am so intimidated. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to run a website. I don't know how to sell shirts. I'm gonna do, okay, here's what Alex taught me. I'm gonna do it exactly how Alex does her shop. I'm gonna offer small through 4X and I'm charging the same price for everything. I don't think it's fair that the bigger X size girls always have to pay more for their shirts. So every shirt's gonna be $20 flat, uh, $5 shipping. I think the bracelets are gonna be $5, $4 if you get it with a t-shirt. I'm gonna do a pre-sale up until August 1st. 
That way I can judge how many shirts I need to buy so I don't stress over spending a bunch of money, a bunch of overhead. So on August 1st, we're going to shut it off and I'm going to start pressing shirts and send them out. The, the issue with getting the transfers is that I have, so I know a lot of people are willing to help me with designs and such. If the next, I only have 94 of these. The next one I buy, it needs to be very simple because I have a person, I have a vendor that I can get these through. Um, normally, you, if it's an intricate design, you have to pay a setup fee and then you have to pay per transfer and it gets very expensive. So the next one that I do, I think is just gonna say, just trust but verify something like we all need a little help or be the village or something but it's gonna it's just gonna be a black press um, because I can get those for my cost 50 cents um, and that helps me make more profit off the shirts <laughs> how about just a donation I am so anxious right now my leg is like I don't feel comfortable taking donations I just don't I don't know why I just don't okay let's have a moment of honesty here this is why I don't there are people on the internet who judge everything that you do if someone sees me getting into my car and they think my car is too nice for someone that needed donations for IVF I don't want them to judge me if I want to go get my nails done because that's my thing my nails are my thing I don't want someone to judge how much money I'm spending on my nails like I didn't I didn't ask for donations for IVF and then I I don't want people who want to voluntarily donate I don't want that to be used against me I want to earn it and I don't know also that's just how I was raised like I want to earn it I want to make good content I want I want you to watch my content because I put good effort into it I want to sell shirts and and you guys get a product for it I just don't feel comfortable with the don donations Can you add a tip with every order? Um, I have to ask Alex. <laughs> I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> Y'all are being so sweet. I just like, I'm sitting here reading the comments and yes, I'm using Shopify. <laughs> You can add a tip on Shopify. When will we be able to pre-order? You guys are so sweet. I opened my big mouth. Now I gotta get my shit together. Um, technically it's ready. I just gotta put it in my bio. It's made, my page is made, everything's made. So I guess I just needed to get my shit together and put it in my bio. Oh my God, I hope I don't do it wrong. What if I do it wrong and y'all order and I did it all wrong and then I gotta make you redo it? Alex should have said I should do a test order but I haven't done a test order yet. <laughs> I know Starbucks does that you have to work 20 hours and I just, I don't want to, I don't, I don't know why it just makes me feel ick. Everything I've ever said that makes me feel ick. If I do it anyways, I should have stuck to my guns. Like the Quan X thing made me feel ick. The Rudy Farias thing made me feel ick. Like, I, I don't know. I need to stick to my guns. I just don't want to do it. Trust, but verify test run of an order. <laughs> Shopify has it set up where you can do a test order. I applied at Tractor Supply. I applied at Starbucks and I applied at Tractor Supply. I'm going to be honest with you guys though. I am I am doing better off of TikTok than I could have done even through working 10 hours a week at Tractor Supply with them paying for it. So at Tractor Supply, you have to work 10 hours a week. It's $94 a paycheck with a $4,300 deductible and then they will pay for two rounds. I, because of the new beta program, the new beta program has been life changing because of the new beta program. If I take 10 hours a week and I put it into TikTok, I stand to monetarily benefit more. Do I have pro gen Y? I don't know what that is. So the answer is probably no. Here's the thing with TikTok. TikTok takes half of everything. TikTok always gets their slice of the pie. I can promise you that. And the other thing is like, 
yes, it's very expensive. And yes, we need to pay for it. But I also don't want anyone to think that like, like my husband and I do okay. You know, it's just going to take, it's going to take some time. We got to save every month, save a little bit. Because one of the rules we put in place when we first started this is we are not going into debt for this. I will be damned if I have to be triggered every month when I make a payment, if it didn't work. Who is made and do I want to see what they said? Teenagers need home. How many do you have? Mad. How many are you uh, fostering right now? It's not less expensive once you go overseas. When you go through the process and you realize how much you have to travel, and how, it's not. That's why it's hard to talk about on this app. No, I had 14 eggs. I didn't have seven. I don't want to talk about alternative options. I want to have IVF where I see Teddy, I'm sorry that you're going through this also. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. It's hard to ignore the comments, but okay. I don't know how to do raffles. Someone else said that. I don't know how to do raffles. Do y'all know my friend Destiny? Thank you, Katie. Are my lashes real? They are. These mine. And you know what? I use this really, really top of the line expensive mascara. Um, you can get it at Walmart. It's $4.99. It's called Essence. Um, I don't know what color they are. They change all the time. It's crazy how you hear, like you guys were just so sweet. You hear all these positive comments. And then you hear one negative comment and it gets to you. Um, I think it's black with blue. I don't know what's in the other room. Anyways, I'm gonna pretend like that didn't just happen. So, um, I am going to get on and work on my Shopify right now. The tinted moisturizer. <laughs> this is also Essence. It was $2. It's the color is happy. Have you ever heard of selling pieces of a fertility puzzle fundraiser? No. I haven't. Interesting. Thank you guys for being sweet. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go figure this out and um, hopefully <laughs> I don't screw it up. Dr. Plonkers, where's that at? Okay, here's the thing. When all these people want to give me, oh yeah, no, I don't have it. We did have um, carrot and we got $10,000 back from that. Yep. And I have no shame in ever, like y'all know, I have no shame. I will tell y'all what I make every month on TikTok. I will tell you how much things make, uh, cost. I will tell you how far we have to go. Um, 
I'm not trying to benefit or profit anything after this. What I will tell you is that Alex has been really, really eye-opening to me. Um, I pay extra for a signed shirt. What? Really? Girl, I will make out with a piece of paper and put it in your shirt thing. Um, Alex has been really eye-opening to me. If this shirt thing takes off, I would absolutely love to be in a position to where my village could help someone else. Because when I posted all my IVF videos and posted the dollar amounts, hold on, I still have them. This was my first round of meds. My second round of meds is 2000 something dollars. I have everything. I have my bracelet for my egg retrieval that didn't work. Here's my um, credit card receipt when I paid for the first round, $18,985. Um, everything together written out because we had extra charges like labs and stuff. Um, $21,976. When I posted all of this stuff the first time I went through it, so many women were like, I could never afford that, so I had to give up. Like, I'm just never going to be able to be a mom. How cool would it be if I got to a point to where I could teach the next person what Alex taught me and I could help someone else earn enough money so that they could have IVF? And then what if me and Alex and that girl then found someone else that needed help and all four of us could help the next person and we could just start a tribe on TikTok of being able to help women pay for IVF because it shouldn't cost that much. I will pay 10 more for a signed shirt. Are y'all serious? <laughs> See, this is why I'm not good at business because I'm like, I'll just sign all of them for free. <laughs> Just come to my house. I'll sign them for you. <laughs> you guys, I can't believe this. I can't. When Alex told me to do this, I was like, I might sell 10 shirts. You add that in for a shirt. <laughs> I can't believe this, y'all. I can't believe this. So I only have 94 of these and then after this I'm gonna have, she gave me some extra ones. Hold on, let me show you the extra ones. I think these were the ones that she did when she did her IVF fundraiser. It says, God's got this. So I think there's like 30 of these. And then she gave me 94 of these. And I buy four and donate them back to you to sell again. Desiree, why would you do that to me? Like, I know why. I know why, because people are good. There's good people, like I'm a good person and there's other good people, but I just still like, my instinct is to be like, why? Like with Alex, like why would she do this for me? She doesn't even know me. Because you won't accept donations. <laughs> It's like going to McDonald's every day. Why can't I lose weight? Why? Why can't I? Because you eat McDonald's every day. The other thing is that um, I'm really scared that if I do this, what if it doesn't work and you guys are going to be disappointed? Oh God, what am I doing? What happened? I 
want God's got this. Hurry up so we can start buying. Oh, God. Okay. Wow. You guys are so sweet. Okay. Give me, like, a press shirts. I have a press coming. It hasn't come yet. I need sh I'm going to order the shirts. Shipping Pirate. I'm going to use Shipping Pirate. Yes. Keeks. Crazy Alex um, taught me... About, she made helped me make a Shopify and she linked it to a pirate ship and she gave me vendor information She started me out with like a hundred free prep transfers um, Like 94 and like 30 I think of these um, So I appreciate all of you so much I w <laughs> I said I'm gonna have it up in 30 minutes and Katie said give me a week <laughs> I probably need a week. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I have to I have to make this a priority. I'm waiting up. This isn't about you. That's so sweet. You guys are all so sweet. Like I just want to hug every single one of you. I had no idea. Um the name is The Last Defense. I want to buy your first OOP shirt. Oh, y'all are all so very sweet. Okay. Kimberly, you're so sweet too. We could have shirt pressing parties. I'm not opposed to it. Can we use PayPal? Shit, I don't know. Susie, I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> Can y'all use PayPal on Shopify? <laughs> Keek, I just ordered this off of uh, Amazon. It was phenomenal. Your first 90 are already sold. Oh my God, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. I used to have a Cricut Press, I sold it. This is what I do, I get into a hobby and then I sell it. Okay, okay. I'm gonna start self-soothing here in a second. So I think I need to get off of here. Um, I'm, oh my God. Y'all are so sweet. Please share blooper videos. Dude, there's gonna be a lot. That's why you don't have debt. That's true. That's true. I missed before you were this popular and you could read the comments. 5 shut up. Don't pull all 94 up at once for a mistake. Huh? Well, all I gotta do right now is count how many I have. This is what Alex said to do. Alex said to go on there and put like 20 of each size and just keep an eye on it. And if, if all the smalls sell out, but you see another size isn't selling, take away ones from that size and put more smalls available because these are all just for pre-sales to give me an idea of how many shirts to order. So how about I don't screw this up? I will take a mistake, I don't even care. Okay. It's gonna be in my IO. Yeah, they're gonna all be pre-sold. So I'm gonna put it up in my bio. Instead of talking about it, I'm just gonna go do it right now, okay? Y'all are so sweet. Well, my friend Sheila, the one that made this cup, she has a press, but um, she makes shirts too. I didn't wanna have to coordinate with like going to someone's house or borrowing it, whatever, so I just bought one. I bought a cheapy one. Um, I, it was like $180 or something. And I want to keep doing this. I want to keep doing this as like a source of income. And my hope is that because I want to be able to pay it forward and help someone else pay for IVF. I have a big one. You can have mine. Why? Why? Stamp paw prints. 
Y'all are so sweet. Where do you live, Gabby? Can I make a couple of cups to donate to you? <laughs> of course you can. I'm not gonna stop asking why. <laughs> Look at what state you're in. I know. Okay, tip option, hold on. I gotta take notes. I got so many Darley notes. I do have a P.O. box. It's in my, my bio. I have a link in my bio. Gabby, no. No. I already ordered the press. It's on its way. Girl, don't do that. Sell it on, sell it on Marketplace. Okay, I know this might surprise some of y'all, but I don't check my P.O. box very re regularly because I forget. So if you ship me something, let me know so I can go check it. Or maybe I, I wanna say maybe I can start checking it once a week, but like I've said I was gonna do that for a year and I haven't done it. Hey, um, y'all asked who made my cup. That's who made my cup. Okay, I'm gonna get off here. I'm gonna go work on my Shopify. Y'all give me like 30 minutes and the link should be up, I promise. I know Katie said give me a week. I promise. Stephanie, that is so sweet of you. I gotta get the hell off of here. Stephanie, I followed you. Okay, I really do have to go. I gotta go get to work. I have to go get to work. <laughs> do I check messages? I try, I try, I try. Okay, I gotta go. You guys are so sweet. Thank you for motivating me. Bye, y'all.